Welcome to GC Cars, my name is Eric and this is the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz Ultimate. And uh, I've been waiting for this one for a while. They unveiled the concept in, I think it was 2015. And ever since then, I was super interested in it. And with that and the Maverick, we got compact pickups back, which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna take an in-depth look at it today. First of all, we look at the exterior, then we look at the interior. Then we're going to drive it and then we're going to sum it all up in the final thoughts. Everything is time coded in the YouTube kind of like timeline. So if you want to skip to something specific, you see it there or you can just watch the whole video, which I always recommend. Starting off with the exterior. Now, this is a compact pickup. It's not a truck because it's, it's a unibody, right? It's, 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 it's a unibody vehicle. Trucks are body and frame. So this is not a truck, but it's still a pickup and it's a compact pickup not too big and i i absolutely love the design um i will upload this video in 2022 so by now you've probably seen my kind of like awards for 2021 not really awards but kind of like my opinion and this is one of the front runners for the uh my, my favorite design of 2021 i think hyundai did an excellent job in terms of design the front end i don't like it on the tucson i'll be honest i don't think it works on the tucson here it works really well i love how the lights are integrated into the grill mesh Fantastic. We got this um, additional optional plastic hook cover. You don't have that standard. Uh, we got our fog lights really nice and big and I think the whole sculpturing is done really really well. The plastic cladding here has so many details and we have like the triangles and really a lot of um, a lot of these Nissan, uh, Nissan, right? Uh, a lot of these Santa Cruz logos like the kind of the profile of that. It's stamped all across the vehicle. It's just really funny. Uh, the wheels are interesting. I I don't know if I like them. I don't know if I dislike them. I'm kind of like, I think they work, but I don't know, I don't know. Overall though, really nice shape. I love the seat pillow with like the plastic going around here. And then the body lines coming back through. We have nice widened hips back again. And then we have our really short bed, but overall it looks really good. I think this is, this. Uh, unlike the Maverick, this is like a lifestyle vehicle more. The Maverick is really good at you know, being, uh, being affordable and being very practical this one is more geared towards i want to have a cool vehicle that is usable and i think that's what the, this santa cruz excels at uh, yeah like i said short bed we're gonna get to that in a bit and then towards the back here we have santa cruz stamped in the back the taillights are fantastic kind of like an arrow with arrows pointing down uh sorry to the side i of course mean i think it looks fantastic i really like how this looks just one thing this color is hampton gray you want to get in like this blue grayish that's in my opinion the best color but i think they could have gone a little more creative with that uh honey has a few really nice colors they have the uh the green from the kona which i really like but i think that would look great on here in fact if i find somebody who can photoshop i'll show you the picture right now like this in like bright green could, could, could look pretty cool anyhow I, I i i genuinely love how this vehicle looks might be one of my favorite designs of the year um, but I'm kind of interested what you think. I know this one is very polarizing. Some people absolutely love it, like me. Some people just hate it. So um, feel free to post your comment, uh, your, your, your opinion in the comments below. But I would say uh, we go to the interior. All right, uh, now in the interior of the Santa Cruz, let's first of all get rid of our uh, jacket though, because yeah, it's nice and comfy in here and nice and warm all the way to the back you go that works anyhow um yeah this is actually pretty nice this is pretty nice i like it a lot and they have put in a quite a bit of detail which makes this cabin look and feel a little nicer first of all you see this piece of trim here that goes all the way around the front and back to the other side and in front of me it turns into vents and then on the sides and the doors it's just trim so it's, it's really nice kind of like this continuous line and it flows down all the way down here to the back i like the creativity and with this interior we have the orange and like greenish cloth right here and then there's like the orange lines but they're just you know little details that kind of add to it interior and just kind of make it feel a little nicer i like that um the seats very comfortable i like it i like the seating position i like the seats themselves great support for my back very good job, Hyundai. And yeah, let's talk about this whole thing though. First of all, we have a digital gauge cluster, which has four different modes and like four different designs you can use. Works pretty well. Um, yeah, I mean, it still looks kind of like it's just a tablet put in there, but 
that's fine. Probably the kind of the most uh, controversial part of this interior is the center stack. I don't have a problem with digital or let's say touch only uh, HVAC controls, so climb controls. That works totally fine and I love how they <laughs> changed the symbols to show like for the recirculating air. I know the word now. I like how it's a little Santa Fe and not just any car. Anyhow, I, I don't have an issue with that. The infotainment is super fast. Like it's probably the most responsive infotainment I've had so far. Like if I switch to like uh, radio channels, you see how quick it is. Like it just react very snappy, very good. Uh, but we have a volume buttons and not a volume knob. And that's just, I know as a driver, I have redundancy here on my steering wheel, but still nothing beats a volume knob. Just put a volume knob somewhere there and everything would be fine. You could like ex literally where the on off button is for the radio, you could just put it so we can twist it and press it as an on off button. That'd be perfect. This still works otherwise. Um, it's like, it's a very good system. It's a very, very good system. Very responsive, looks very good. I don't have any other issues except for the um, volume knob. We have a wireless phone charger. This all is very good and very nice. Interesting, <laughs> um, our seat controls, for heated seats, ventilated seats we have in here and the heated steering wheel. Um, if you look at them, they're actually upside down <laughs> because you look as a driver or a passenger, you look down on them and because they're right here, it makes sense for them to be upside down. But if you look from the other side, you notice that, oh, these buttons are upside down. It's kind of like a little, neat little thingy. And uh, other than that, no, it's, it's, it's a really nice cabin. I like it. Uh, we have good materials. Like I said, it's just, it's really more about, it's not necessarily the, you, know, you have to have the most expensive materials in your interior. It's really about what you do with what you have. And this is really nice because we have plastic metal, plastic metal, plastic cloth, plastic metal, plastic leather. And that's what I see. That's what I want to see. Creativity. And this is here in, uh, yeah, in very different and very many ways. I like it. Good job on it. Uh, let's take a look at the back seats though. And then we're going to take a look at the, the trunk. Well, the bed, the bed, sorry. Okay. Uh, before we sit down, just a quick note, just like in every pickup, we have under seat storage, which is really nice uh, on both sides, both sides. Uh, so if you have something that you want to keep a little more hidden or just need a bit more storage, you got it right here. And there's plenty of space underneath. So let's sit down though. There we go. Keep it nice and clean or at least as clean as possible. And um, yeah, once again, it's pretty comfy, of course, because it, we have the bed in the back. It's a little more upright than you would have it in most SUVs. And store uh, like space itself for me, sitting behind myself at five foot seven is pretty good. I could imagine if you have a six foot passenger, uh, like driver and a six foot passenger, could get a little tight, but for me personally, um, it is really good. It's fine, and for most adults, it shouldn't be really an issue. We have a netting in the back on both sides, so we have space, which is nice. Cup holder, really nice and big. <laughs> Interesting, we have a little label that says, don't put any open cups in here, which is, well, you'd think that's kind of logical, but you never know, right? And uh, on that cloth here, and we have leather down there. Comfy, very comfy. We can, of course, can look out of our sunroof, which we have up here. Two USB ports down below. And then lastly, we have a window we can use because this is a pickup. So we need a little window for pass-throughs or whatever else you need, or just ventilation. That's good. So um, yeah, this is nice. But what you really care about probably, if you want to buy a Santa Cruz, is the bed. So let's switch over to the details. Hello and welcome to the details on this 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz Ultimate. Now, please excuse the weatherproofing I have done for myself, but as a German, I am not quite used to the climate here in Canada. Like it or not, this is what peak weatherproofing looks like. Now, I was supposed to talk about the bed and so I shall do so. First of all, let's put down our notes. The bed, we can open it and it's dampened. Very nice. And we have 27.0 cubic feet of space. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, how do I access the bed? It is blocked. Good observation. Well, what we can do is first of all, store our notes in the bed. And now all we need to do is twist a little yellow latch and then we can open it up. It was frozen, excuse the time in between. And now we have a full on bed. We can climb up easily and exit the frame so you don't even see me 
of course I can come back down. Here I am. Now we also have cup holders of various sizes on both sides, so you can just sit down and read a physics book while you drink a glass of water. Relaxing. Now, of course, if you want to close it again, you can just grab it, pull it, latch it, secure it, and it's done. This is the bed of the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz Ultimate. Now, let's get driving. Okay, now on the road here in the Santa Cruz, and as always, we start off with the launch and see how quick it is. Disable traction control, disable stability control, put into sport mode, and we're gonna let the car shift for itself. Please excuse the light, but we can fix that. <laughs> we're gonna brake torque. Takes a while, 2000 RPM. There we go. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 kilometers an hour. Yeah, pretty good, and braking. I shouldn't have done that. I got my equipment in the back. <laughs> okay, that was the only time we're ever gonna do that. <laughs> um, it's decent, 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 decent. So we got a turbocharged 2.5 liter. Let's go back to normal. Um, inline four, producing 281 horsepower and 311 pound-feet of torque sent to all four wheels, all-wheel drive, not four-wheel drive, um, through an eight-speed dual-clutch trans mission power wise really good uh, you got plenty of power at all time like um we can we can we'll do a 50 kilometer hour test in a second we can also shift ourselves either using this shift knob or we can use the paddles we have so we are in fourth third fourth fifth fourth third and because it's a dual clutch, it's super fast. Like it reacts super quick to all of our inputs, which is really nice. I do have an issue though with how this drives, especially at lower speeds. And that's something that I noticed in a lot of uh, Hyundai and Kia products. So let me just come to a quick stop. And then we just, oh no, we don't really. So let's, let's accelerate. We're gonna go 30 kilometers an hour. That's roughly 18 miles an hour. Okay, now it didn't do it. <laughs> so normally when I'm driving in the city, we can do it at 42, get a little faster. So right, okay, so it didn't do it now. That's uh, when you want to show something. Anyhow, <laughs> what it often does, it holds the gears longer than I want it to. So it lets me drive at like 2,400 RPM instead of just shifting up, which I can do. I can, I can literally do it manually in those cases. So it's not like the gear isn't available or the revs don't like aren't sufficient. It totally is. I think it's just that Hyundai Kia kind of, in this case Hyundai obviously, um, prioritize you know, responsiveness over uh, fuel economy, which is generally commendable, I guess. Uh, but the problem is that the engine just doesn't sound nice at two and a half thousand RPM. And it's very coarse sounding and it's just, it's just an unpleasant noise. And you know, it's, it's early in the morning. You just kind of want to, you want to get to your job. You're, you're, you know, you're not in the greatest moods maybe. And then it's just like, uh, and it's just like, please just shift up. So I always have to shift up myself for that. Um, and this is also not good for fuel economy. So I think, I don't know, that, that would be a bit more, less aggressive. Shift logic, speaking of shift logic, ooh, we gotta get up to 50, okay, 50 and forward. Quick downshift and off we go. Plenty of power, plenty of power here in this Santa Cruz. Um, yeah, so really other than that, driving wise, power is good, transmission is, Decent, although, mm -hmm, it being a dual clutch, there are drawbacks to that. And those drawbacks are that it can be a little choppy at lower speeds. So sometimes it's, you know, it's like, uh, like when you're in a manual, you're almost stalling it. That's how it sometimes feels, but it's kind of like a little jittery. Uh, that's the drawback of the dual clutch. And another drawback is that it can roll backwards. On a hill, it can roll backwards. We don't want anyone behind us. Let's see what it does right now. Happened to me when I was in a McDonald's drive-thru. So let's get off the brake. It's pulling through now, but occasionally it uh, rolls backwards, which is not very pleasant because in an automatic, you don't really expect that if you're not used to that. Um, it's not a big issue, but overall, I just feel like a torque converter automatic, a regular automatic would have just been more adequate for the, for the Santa Cruz. But I know that they use the dual clutch in pretty much everything. That's their transmission they use. And generally it's a good transmission. 
but they, I'm just saying there are a few minor drawbacks to that. But um, of course, this is the road where we always test the right quality. So let's see how it eats up this road that is absolutely atrocious. A lot of jitters. Hey, they fixed the potholes. Nice. The worst of it, at least. And it's pretty comfy, honestly. It's really comfy. There's a bit of vibration here and there. Um, but I'm very well isolated here in the cabin. I'm sorry for the sun. Um, nothing I can do about that, unfortunately. That's one of the things about winter filming is that you will get blinded, but we're about to turn over. And um, yeah, so the, the right quality is actually really comfy. It is comfy in here. It's well isolated. You don't hear, hear many rattles or anything. Really good. Um, I like that in general driving this is actually pretty nice. It is enjoyable. Oh, oh, now we go. Now we got now we got the holding the revs a little. Because I can shift. Now it hold it now it held the revs at like almost two and a half thousand, which is just not really necessary because I'm not asking for it right now. Anyhow, we talked about that. <laughs> Sorry, just like it just came up. But um, other than that, really driving, I, I enjoy driving this a lot. Like I said, the driving position is really nice and it just is very comfy to drive. You got plenty of power. The transmission reacts very well and very quickly to everything you need. You got all-wheel drive, so even in snowy and icy conditions like we had this week, um, you have no issues whatsoever to get traction. Of course, general PSA. Everybody who watches this video is aware of that probably, but some people have a misconception that only because they can have all-wheel drive, they can brake faster. And that's just not how it works. All-wheel drive only helps you accelerate, okay? Just, just so you know. Um, <laughs> Anyhow, uh, let's move on. The stereo system is decent. Nothing to write home about in terms of like it didn't blow me away, but it also is very enjoyable to listen to. So I would, it's just like not really worth mentioning. Much. Decent, decent, just in case you cared about that. That's a decent system. And then of course, we do have tech and it being a Hyundai. Here we go with my praise because as always, Hyundai does amazing tech in their technology, in their cars. In their technology in their cars and um, starting off with the gauge cluster when we turn we get nice little blind spot cameras in our gauge cluster so one of the one of the gauges with the speedometer or the tachometer depending on where we turn turns into a camera I can just show you that to you and now I see my blind spot camera which is so good that I literally only need to check my immediate left and then I need to check the camera that's all I need to do because both my mirror and my blind spot are covered by the camera really nice speaking of cameras reverse cameras and like all the cameras we have are really good we have a top-down view we have a reverse camera we have a front camera and then we have cameras for all four individual wheels all very high resolution all high refresh rate so you at all times know exactly where you place the car and it's so easy to park this and you always know what's going on love it uh, more technology we got the um, active lane centering assist that I really much love. If you want to see it in action, make sure to check out the highway PV test drive that we do. I'm just going to put that top right hand corner for you as soon as it's uploaded. And uh, basically, this car is somewhat capable of driving itself. It's not an autonomous system, but on the highway or like on the highway, it's just, you know, really you can, you can put that on and most situations, most turns, most corners will kind of take by itself. Turns, not corners. And of course, you still have your hands on the steering wheel, but you can really just it takes a lot of the work out of it because you mostly have to monitor and just do some minor corrections here and there. Um, but it's very nice, especially in long commutes or in, in a traffic jam. You can put on the system and it's uh, it just works so well. I like it. Yes, this year it has kind of lost its crown. Like it, it used to be like the best ones we tested on here. It did lose its crown to uh, both Mercedes, Volvo and Cadillac but those are all luxury manufacturers. I have yet to drive a non-luxury car that has driving assists as good as this Hyundai or Kia's in general have. Really nice. If you, like I said, if you commute a lot, if you drive long distances a lot, you're going to learn to love this system. Quickly handling. If you drive this car and expect like the handling of a truck, you will be very pleasantly surprised because this actually handles pretty well. Of course, um, front wheel drive based, all wheel drive, you will if you push it around corners hard, it'll understeer. It'll understeer a lot, especially in snow. But it's very controllable and you're actually capable of going around corners a lot quicker than you would maybe think. And um, other than that, responsiveness is really good. So if I were to just 
we go. There we go. Very nice. Handles very nice. Drives very nice. And I think that really sums it up. I, I enjoy, I enjoy the Santa Cruz a lot. It drives very nicely. It's very comfy to drive. And I think with that, we're going to send it off to the final thoughts. Okay, final thoughts on the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz Ultimate. And um, quickly before we go to the vehicle itself, I know in a lot of like reviews and comparisons, um, there's the big, well, kind of small, uh, but Maverick looming there. And we're gonna get our hands on the Maverick, but I think once we get to drive both cars, I might draw a bit of a different conclusion from other, um, some other outlets. Anyhow, you know, by itself, I really like the Santa Cruz. I really like it. First of all, I think the styling is amazing. I've talked about that. I love how it looks. And especially now, you know, the, the lights, that's what I mean with the lights. Just, it just looks fantastic. Um, it drives pretty well for the most part. Yes, a torque converter would have been nicer than a DCT. Um, it just would have been a little better in daily driving. And occasionally it's a little too aggressive, but if I have to choose between too aggressive and like the, the shift logic being too aggressive or being a little too lethargic, I take the too aggressive all the time. So it's still, totally fine to drive totally it's good to drive and other than that you got the hyundai tech and all that so really um if you if you want to have if you want to have a car that is usable in terms of like you have you know utility you have five seats and you have a bed in the back that is covered from the factory you don't have to buy anything you don't have to take any options you have a cool cover and all that and you know it's it's a lifestyle vehicle i would pay, put this somewhere along the line of a jeep and a bronco not as in off-road capable, it's not nearly as off-road capable, um, but these are cars that you drive for what they, what, they talk, what they say about you and kind of the image they portray. And I totally get that. that that's a pretty cool beach vehicle, well, like getaway, weekend getaway vehicle. I like it. As expect, it's $47,202.65 Canadian. That is with the, with the little cover we have, with a little plastic protector on the hood. And after delivery, and all the freight fees and all that, and destination fees. So that's aspect. And honestly, I think that's a reasonable price. I wouldn't consider it a bargain or anything, but for what you get, I think that's a decent price. And I can totally see somebody spending the money on that because it is more than just a utility vehicle. It's, it's, it's a lifestyle vehicle. It kind of says something, it makes you feel something. And that's, I think, important in today's landscape of vehicles because there's way too many cars which is just kind of like, meh. Anyhow, good job, honey. I liked it. And also that was right. That was the first Hyundai we had on the trip. We had the Genesis already, but that's the first technical Hyundai. So hi, hi Hyundai. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the channel. Anyhow guys, uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I already said it, but we upload videos every single week. Mostly we have a review and multiple POV drives a week. So if you like cars, trucks, whatever, um, make sure to subscribe to the bell because we upload them all the time. And also uh, yeah, the more subscribers I have, that helps me cost you literally zero things. Nothing. You pay nothing. And um, I get to drive more cars and more cool, cool cars and cooler cars. So yeah. Anyhow, I hope you liked the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I hope I'll see you in the next one. Thank you and goodbye.